Hi, Dr. Brianna Guan here. I wanted to share some research with you that I've been diving into. So I was really curious if there was a relationship between glucose metabolism and hydration status. And turns out there is a lot of literature on this topic and those things are very related. So we see at a cellular level that glucose is absolutely impacted by hydration status such that cells are not able to uptake glucose as well when they are not hydrated well. And so you create a state of higher insulin because the cells are not transporting glucose as well. We also see this extended and, and continued in uh, population studies. Those that are underhydrated tend to have higher glucose levels, more type two diabetes and higher A1Cs in some studies. So it's really fascinating. Um, it makes sense if glucose doesn't transport well in a state of uh, dehydration. And so I wanted to share with you that tip and reminder to support your hydration needs. And then how can we carry this out practically? Because we all really know this already. And so a few tips um, for hydration that I like to share with folks. One, keep a bottle with you wherever you are so that you always have an opportunity to hydrate. If it's visible, you're more likely to hydrate. So put one at your desk, take it with you to the car, put a spare one in the car, one at home. And so you're, you always have your uh, water with you. Um, number two, I recommend avoiding plastic for water bottles. Uh, try to filter your own water at home and then bring that water with you. So you have good clean water and you don't have that contamination of plastic or other things that are in unfiltered water. Uh, tip number three, if you don't like to drink a lot of water, try adding some fruit to your water, like orange slices, a cucumber, mint, rosemary leaves, or something like that. You can also drink teas. Teas are so wonderful because you get all the benefits of the polyphenols and the aromatic um, properties of tea. And that's great for gut health, good for DNA antioxidants. So tea is wonderful. And I'm talking about herbal teas, largely black teas and green teas have different properties that may not be as hydrating for you. Um, and some teas are even calming. So, you know, added benefit there for stress relief. If you need those sort of, sort of things, I recommend avoiding cold water, especially for folks who tend to have digestive issues because cold water can decrease digestive capacity, lead to more constipation or decrease the digestive ability. Um, with that, you don't want to drink all your water with your meals. It's better to drink water away from meals like 30 minutes or two hours after a meal or such, you can drink water to sit down uh, to help move your food. But if you drink a large amount of water, you're going to dilute, dilute your stomach acids. So that reduces digestive capacity. So those are some of my favorite water tips. Um, get a water bottle that's ceramic or glass or stainless steel. Avoid the plastic is, is super important, but just remember to really support your body to function. If you're doing all these things with your diet and your sleep and et cetera, you want to make sure that you're getting the benefits of water. Thanks so much.